I'm Samina Dornan and I'm a consultant subspecialist maternal fetal medicine in King's College Hospital London. My role is that I scan babies and I can identify if there is any structural abnormalities or any chromosomal or genetic syndromes. So like in any other fetal abnormality, specifically in spina bifida cases, I need a multidisciplinary team around me. So during pregnancy, of course, the nurses and the all allied forces, they help me to take care of the patient, but also the consultant radiologist who has experience in the fetal MRI, which we have here in Kings, they would perform the fetal MRI and exactly pinpoint where the defect is, which help us, especially the surgeon, uh, in order to plan the surgery. And then, of course, we can put a whole team around these pregnancies and we can diagnose specifically what the condition is. And then the management, of course, depends on what the conditions are. In this particular case, this couple came to me very earlier in pregnancy and they were told that something is wrong with the baby. Once I saw her in detail, I realized that the fetus has a condition which is called spina bifida. Spina bifida is where the spinal cord of the baby doesn't close. Now, just to simplify it, if you think about a zip, a zip of the dress, okay? So you close the zip from down to up. In these cases, in the spinal cord, they form from two, two columns, yeah? And it closes from the top of the head to the bottom of our spine. In severe cases of spina bifida, the top doesn't close and we call it an encephaly. In a milder form, in majority of 95% of the cases, the zip doesn't close all the way to the bottom. And so the majority of the spina bifida defects are at the bottom of the babies. Yeah? And this particular one was very low down, what we call it sacral, lumbosacral spina bifida. And then again, they can have, these defects can have a bit of a neural tissue in it, yes, nerve fibers, or they can just have a fluid, cerebrospinal fluid. And that also can have effect on the outcomes. This one is a simple one. I need a lot of proper subspecialists around me. So yes, I am the person to diagnose and take them through the pregnancy, but then I need a neonatologist when the baby is born for her to take over. Then I need a neurosurgeon to see and uh, of course uh, operate and then i need a specialized anesthetist well qualified to take care of such a small babies and anesthetize them for the surgery postoperatively of course again the neonatal unit comes into play and then of course long-term follow-up by the orthopedic Today we have operated on a baby uh, three days old who was picked up to have a defect in the spine. Luckily, we were able to do an MRI scan also and it showed that the defect was small and uh, would probably uh, won't cause uh, too much uh, problems with the movements uh, and the bowel and bladder control because we also did an MRI scan which gave us more details suggesting that the sac only had fluid in it and no neural tissue. The mother completed her, her full uh, term pregnancy. So today we operated on this baby and the baby is doing well. This baby was lucky that uh, it did not have uh, any neural tissue in the sac. It was only containing some fluid and there was a track coming from the skin going all the way down towards the nerves. So this track was dissected out and removed and uh, these, uh, the fluid, uh, the sac which contains the fluid and the nerves was repaired and the procedure just took one and a half hours. And inshallah, this baby should do very well. In our neonatology intensive care unit, first we've had to initially assist her uh, during the delivery. When babies are born like Anabia with a mass at the back uh, with spina bifida, we take great care in actually making sure that um, that mass isn't uh, compressed and we would have to position her um, very well either in a sideline position or in a prone. Also particular attention is given if uh, if that mass is for example as if it has a broken skin uh, where your cerebrospinal Food will be leaking out so we have to keep that area very clean and to uh, put some uh, wet uh, dressing on it and also a protective plastic film just protect to protect the area 
However, with Anabia's case, we were fortunate that this was just a very uh, small mass. It's measured about 2.5 by 2.5 centimeters. There was a bit of a, of a little hole, a puncture, but there was no active oozing from the site. So we just uh, resuscitated her as normal and we just positioned her and put some wet gauze and a protective dressing on it. And we admitted her into the neonatal unit to prepare her for her surgery. Uh, whilst in the neonatal unit, uh, while preparing for um, her um, surgery, of course, we had to start initially with giving her in, um, intravenous fluids. And then after that, we introduced um, some oral milk feeds for her, which she seems to be tolerating well. However, a uh, day prior or just about 12 hours prior to surgery, we need to make sure that um, she goes back with nothing, no uh, milk into her tummy, just because if you have uh, milk in your tummy prior to surgery and you have to give anesthesia sometimes uh, babies may aspirate and that will go to their lungs and that's not a very good thing to do so any baby going for surgery especially for anabia's case would have to have uh, just clear iv fluids and um, prior to surgery on the day of her surgery uh, we just made sure that she is well prepared uh, we checked her bloods again make sure that all her blood parameters are normal before sending her to surgery uh, it's also very important that we look after uh, their families, their parents, because this is a very tough time for them because it's their first baby. They probably don't know much about uh, the implications of the, of the mass at the back, uh, but we try to explain this to them uh, prior to surgery, uh, both on our side and from the surgeon's side too, as well as from the obstetrician side. Uh, they know that this is a very delicate surgery and it, it comes with um, implications. Um, there might be um, some disability associated with spina bifida, like if uh, depending, on the, depending on the extent of the lesion, uh, you may have uh, problems with walking or bladder control. However, with Anabia's case, we were uh, very lucky that there was no nerve tissue that was protruding outside of the vertebra and she's moving her limbs properly and she seemed to be uh, having a regular uh, urine output. And so we are looking and we're very positive in terms of her outcome. Uh, neonatal anesthesia is a, a challenging part uh, or a ch challenging subspecialty in anesthesia. And uh, although many anesthetists will uh, deal with pediatric anesthesia, uh, neonatal anesthesia is actually a di completely different ballgame. Uh, that is due to the small size of the babies and uh, their ability to handle um, or th how their bodies react. When I was informed about this baby, um, the first thing I would do was liaise very quickly with other colleagues. And that would mean being part of a multidisciplinary team, which includes the neonatologist and the consultant neurosurgeon. And the first thing I would uh, ask for is that, why are we operating on this baby? What is the reason? And in this case, uh, uh, the baby had a condition which is called spina bifida uh, and a meningomyelocele. And luckily, there was no neural tissue in this lesion, which, which uh, makes a huge difference because uh, if that happens, then that will imply um, some neurological deficits. But in this case, it was just fluid, and hence there was no neurological deficits. The other things I would be looking for, which could potentially affect the anesthesia of this baby, would be uh, problems with the heart or problems with the lung. Uh, luckily in this baby, you know, she was born, apart from this problem, she was actually fit and well. And I li uh, liaised closely with the, our neonatologist who informed me that, uh, you know, she is well. And the key thing is that we need to assess whether she's ready for the operation or not. At the week 20, when the, we had the ultrasound of the baby, we came to know that there is a, some problem with the spine at the back. So the doctor advised me to go to India uh, for some a fetal specialist and they only can guide how we can proceed this delivery. Then uh, I tried to find, apart from going to India, if we will find here in Dubai, so I searched by the Google and find Dr. Samin Adornon, King's College. And uh, I found the similar profile which they are referring to, to India. So instead of going to India, I prefer to be here. And uh, when I came, I found uh, even whatever written in the profile, even the much a better and good doctors in, in terms of the finding the problems and uh, diagnosis how she did from the beginning 
and from that point of view means uh, we very become very comfortable by his uh, opinion giving opinion and after making his reports so we become very comfortable and feel comfortable then we continued here with the king's college and today is the challenging day for me the baby is born and then she is operated and uh, she is well now so i am very glad with the hospitals and whatever the teams we have it's a great team and i really appreciate everybody who involved in this case usually we can detect these cases even at 16 weeks of pregnancy but most commonly these are detected at around 18 20 weeks uh, um of pregnancy most important thing in these cases where we can see a good outcome is to analyze the brain in spina bifida cases where the cord or the spinal cord doesn't close up if there is no changes in the fetal brain then these cases can have a good outcome